So we are here in Surrey at a roundtable media conference about the anti-racism initiative um, by MLA uh, for, for Surrey Green Timbers and to discuss BC's historic anti-racism data. Uh, David Eby, Attorney General and Rachna Singh, Parliamentary Secretary for Anti-Racism Initiatives, as well as uh, Gary Begg is here as well. And they're going to discuss the anti-racism initiative and the data that they've collected. Saying I'm MLA for Surrey Green Timbers, also Parliamentary Secretary for Anti-Racism Initiatives, joining you from the shared territories of Kwantlen, Kwikwetlam, Ketsi, Sami Amu, and Swasan First Nations. And today I'm so honored to be joined by my colleagues, Minister David Eby, Attorney General, Minister of Housing, uh, Gary Bagg, MLA for Surrey Guilford, Minister Harry Banks, Minister of Labor, and as the, uh, the reason that we are gathering today, you all know that we, the province on, introduced the anti-racism data legislation on May 2nd, and with the support of all the parties, it, uh, it got passed in the legislature and it got royal assent on June 2nd. Uh, it's a historic moment for all of us uh, in British Columbia, and I think it is one of the first kind in Canada to, be, uh, to create a framework to collecting the data that was not collected before. Uh, demographic data uh, that will talk, uh, tell us about the inequities that the indigenous, black, and racialized communities face, especially in the government services. We know that racism exists everywhere, and the government services are also not immune to that. And to mirror that, to work on that, it is important that we collect the data. We cannot start working on something that we don't know about, that we don't, so this data legislation is going to, it, has, it is going to provide the framework to the government to, uh, to be able to collect the data. Historically, we have collected the data, but it has been either incons inconsistent or it was not collected on certain communities. So this is the framework that we are going with. And one really good thing about this data legislation is that it was co-developed with the indigenous, uh, indi indigenous and Métis communities, and more than 13,000 people all from different uh, communities, uh, they took, they participated in this, in the, uh, when we, uh, in, the, in the data legislation, like when we introduced that. So this is just the uh, introduction for that. I'll pass it on to the minister to talk a little bit about it more in detail, and then I can come back to you and talk about this in Punjabi. Well, hello, everybody. It's nice to be in uh, Surrey. Thank you for joining us. Uh, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, the reason why we're, um, really uh, trying to emphasize the importance of this new law is because we really do believe it will be transformative in how government delivers services. Uh, one of the issues uh, that has been made very clear to us from different communities across the province is that the services that government delivers aren't delivered equally to different groups in the province. And that can be because there's not enough information where people are about the program. It could be because people are being tr treated differently in the program, in a school, in a hospital. Um, it could be because of uh, some sort of cultural uh, barrier. Um, it could be because of any number of reasons. But the challenge is, without being able to collect uh, the information that we have and say, uh, okay, how are different communities accessing this? What are the outcomes? Are, are people um, uh, uh, not uh, leaving schools with the same kind of outcomes, not leaving hospitals with the same kind of outcomes, uh, not interacting with police with the same kind of outcomes? then we don't know what the problem is, and we're not able to fix it. So this is an essential piece of work for us to be able to take the next step of fixing the problem. Maybe it's providing the RESP program information in a particular language or in particular cultural newspapers so that a group that is not taking up that program gets to benefit from it. Uh, maybe it's about uh, training of uh, ad administrators and doctors and nurses about the particular needs of a community to make sure that they feel safer when they go to hospital. Um, we don't know what those solutions are going to be, but part of it is about identifying what the problems are, and this, that's what this legislation is about. At its core, it's about racism in the system, that the system treats people differently, whether intentionally or unintentionally, it doesn't matter. This looks at, are people being treated differently? Are they having different results? And that allows us as government to fix it, because we found the problem and now we can have a program in place that addresses the issue. So we think it's really significant. Um, Ontario has legislation in place that uh, this is the second evolution of. So we learned from what they did uh, and we're putting in place, we think it is uh, leading in North America. 
Um, and we're hoping to provide an example to other provinces and other places in the world about how, uh, as a community that has a, a multicultural uh, and a strong Indigenous presence, so many different traditions, so many different languages, so many different groups, how we can provide government that provides fair outcomes for everybody. Um, so thank you for coming and, and helping uh, your listeners and your readers understand the significance of this and how we're working to eliminate racism in our province. I'll turn back to yeah, Rasha. Thank you so much, David. Uh, मैं थोड़ा ਜਿਹਾ ਹੁਣ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਵਿੱਚ ਇਹਦੇ ਬਾਰੇ ਜਾਣਕਾਰੀ ਦੇਣਾ ਚਾਹੂੰਗੀ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਜਦ ਅਸੀਂ ਆਂਕੜਿਆਂ ਦੀ ਗੱਲ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਡੇਟਾ ਦੀ ਗੱਲ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਬਹੁਤ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਟੈਕਨੀਕਲ ਟਰਮ ਲੱਗਦੀ ਹੈਗੀ ਹੈ ਔਰ ਜਦ ਅਸੀਂ ਰੇਸਿਜ਼ਮ ਤੇ ਡੇਟਾ ਨੂੰ ਇਕੱਠਾ ਜੋੜ ਕੇ ਦੇਖਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਤੇ ਇਟ ਬਿਕਮਸ ਅ ਬਹੁਤ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਕੰਪਲੈਕਸ ਇਸ਼ੂ ਨਜ਼ਰ ਆਂਦਾ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਇੱਕ ਆਮ ਬੰਦੇ ਲਈ ਤੇ ਜਦ ਅਸੀਂ ਰੇਸਿਜ਼ਮ ਨੂੰ ਜਦ ਦੇਖਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਕਈ ਵਾਰ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਲੱਗਦਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਇੰਡੀਵਿਜੂਅਲ ਰੇਸਿਜ਼ਮ ਹੋ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਕਿਸੇ ਨੇ ਕਿਸੇ ਨੂੰ ਗਾਲੀ ਗਲੋਚ ਕੀਤਾ ਕਿਸੇ ਨੇ ਕਿਸੇ ਨਾਲ ਨਸਲਵਾਦੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਘਟਨਾ ਹੋਈ ਹੈ ਕਿਸੇ ਨੇ ਕਿਸੇ ਨੂੰ ਕਿਹਾ you paki or you hindu you sikh you go back to your country par jada ki system vich systemic racism jada ki sadiyan to judeya hoya aur especially jaisi canada di history nu leke dekhiye jada colonial structures hage hain sade jada indigenous uh, indigenous lokan di eh dharti hagi eh edu colonize kita gaya te jada racism us time to hi jada shuru ho gaya tera systems de vich vad gaya oh indigenous lokan de khilaf ta siga hi siga oh rangdar lokan de khilaf sial nasal de lokan de khilaf hi bahut hi jada system ਵਿੱਚ ਹੈਗਾ ਕਈ ਵਾਰ ਉਹ ਇੰਟੈਂਸ਼ਨਲ ਹੈਗਾ ਬਹੁਤ ਹੀ ਕੌਨਸ਼ੀਅਸ ਲੈਵਲ ਤੇ ਕਈ ਵਾਰ ਅਨਕੌਨਸ਼ੀਅਸ ਲੈਵਲ ਤੇ ਜਦ ਅਸੀਂ ਗੱਲਾਂ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਕਿ ਅਸੀਂ ਰੇਸਿਜ਼ਮ ਨੂੰ ਟੈਕਲ ਕਰਨਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਔਰ ਸਰਕਾਰਾਂ ਦੀ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਹਮੇਸ਼ਾ ਮੈਂ ਇੱਕ ਗੱਲ ਕਹੀ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਸਰਕਾਰਾਂ ਦੀ ਇੱਕ ਨੈਤਿਕ ਜ਼ਿੰਮੇਵਾਰੀ ਹੈਗੀ ਹੈ ਨਸਲਵਾਦ ਦਾ ਸਾਹਮਣਾ ਕਰਨ ਦੀ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਟੈਕਲ ਕਰਨ ਲਈ ਪਰ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਜੇ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਸਿਰਫ ਗੱਲਾਂ ਕਰਕੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਕੀਤਾ ਜਾਏਗਾ ਉਹਦੇ ਲਈ ਐਕਸ਼ਨ ਲੈਣਾ ਬਹੁਤ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਜ਼ਰੂਰੀ ਹੈ ਔਰ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਔਰ ਸਾਰੀ ਜਿਹੜੀਆਂ ਆਰਗੇਨਾਈਜੇਸ਼ਨਸ ਕਾਫੀ ਦੇਰ ਤੋਂ ਕਹਿ ਰਹੀਆਂ ਸੀ ਕਿ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਆਂਕੜੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਇਕੱਠੇ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਹੈਗੇ ਔਰ ਆਂਕੜੇ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਸਰਕਾਰਾਂ ਦੀ ਥੋੜੀ ਜੀ ਰੈਜ਼ਿਸਟੈਂਸ ਵੀ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਆਂਕੜੇ ਇਕੱਠੇ ਕਰਨ ਲਈ ਇਹ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਆਂਕੜੇ ਕਹਿ ਰਹੇ ਹਾਂ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਹਿਸਟੋਰੀਕਲੀ ਕੀ ਕੀਤਾ ਗਿਆ ਕਿ ਜਦੋਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਉਹ ਆਂਕੜੇ ਇਕੱਠੇ ਕੀਤੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਹੋਰ ਫਰਦਰ ਸਟਿਗਮਟਾਈਜ਼ ਕਰਤਾ ਹੋਰ ਮਾਰਜਨਲਾਈਜ਼ ਕਰਤਾ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਅਸੀਂ ਉੱਤੇ ਚੱਕਣਾ ਚਾਹ ਰਹੇ ਸੀਗੇ ਬੇਸ਼ੱਕ ਉਹ ਇੰਡੀਜੀਨਸ ਲੋਕੀ ਸੀਗੇ ਜਾਂ ਸਾਡੇ ਵਰਗੇ ਸਾਊਥ ਏਸ਼ੀਅਨ ਜਾਂ ਚਾਈਨੀਜ਼ ਮੂਲ ਦੇ ਲੋਕੀ ਸੀਗੇ ਤੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਜਦ ਇਹ ਗੱਲ ਅਸੀਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਪੂਰਾ ਜਦ ਸੈਟ ਅਪ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਕੀਤਾ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਜਦ ਮੈਂਡੇਟ ਦਿੱਤੀ ਗਈ ਕਿ ਐਂਟੀ ਰੈਸਿਜ਼ਮ ਡੇਟਾ ਲੈਜਿਸਲੇਸ਼ਨ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਜਾ ਆਇਆ ਜਾਵੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਨਾਲ ਕੰਸਲਟੇਸ਼ਨਸ ਕੀਤੀਆਂ ਉਸ ਨਾਲ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀਜ਼ ਕੋਲ ਗਏ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਇਹ ਇੰਪੈਕਟ ਕਰੇਗਾ ਐ ਡੇਟਾ ਲੈਜਿਸਲੇਸ਼ਨ ਤਾਂ ਹੀ ਮੈਂ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਵੀ ਦੱਸਿਆ 13000 ਤੋਂ ਵੱਧ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਨੇ ਇਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਸ਼ਮੂਲੀਅਤ ਕੀਤੀ ਆਰਗੇਨਾਈਜੇਸ਼ਨਸ ਨੇ ਆਪੇ ਹੀ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਪਾਰਟਨਰਸ ਨੇ ਆਪੇ ਹੀ ਜਿਹੜੀਆਂ ਕੰਸਲਟੇਸ਼ਨਸ ਆਪਣੀ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀਜ਼ ਕੀਤੀਆਂ ਆਪਣੀ ਲੈਂਗੁਏਜ ਵਿੱਚ ਆਪਣੀ ਕਲਚਰਲੀ ਸੈਂਸਿਟਿਵ ਵੇ ਨਾਲ ਕੀਤੀਆਂ ਨਾਲੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਜਾਣਕਾਰੀ ਦਿੱਤੀ ਕਿ ਇਹ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਹਾਰਮ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਰਨਾ ਚਾਹੀਦਾ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਹਾਰਮ ਨਾ ਹੋਵੇ ਇਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਇਹਦੇ ਬਾਰੇ ਕਾਫੀ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਚੀਜ਼ਾਂ ਇਸ ਲੈਜਿਸਲੇਸ਼ਨ ਚ ਰੱਖੀਆਂ ਗਈਆਂ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਕਿ ਇੱਕ ਐਂਟੀ ਰੈਸਿਜ਼ਮ ਡੇਟਾ ਕਮਿਟੀ ਦੀ ਸਥਾਪਨਾ ਹੋਣੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਇਸ ਸਮਰ ਵਿੱਚ ਹੋ ਜਾਏਗੀ ਫਿਰ ਆਂਕੜੇ ਇਕੱਠੇ ਕਰਨੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਬੀਸੀ ਸਟੈਟਸ ਆਂਕੜੇ ਇਕੱਠੇ ਕਰੇਗਾ ਇਨ ਦਾ ਹੋਪਫੁਲੀ ਇਨ ਫਾਲ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਆਂਕੜਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਪੂਰਾ ਐਨਾਲਾਈਜ਼ ਕਰਕੇ ਉਹ ਡੇਟਾ ਦਾ ਐਨਾਲਿਸਿਸ ਕਰਕੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਪਹਿਲੀ ਰਿਪੋਰਟ ਜੂਨ 2023 ਵਿੱਚ ਪਬਲਿਕ ਕਰਾਂਗੇ ਤਾਂ ਕਿ ਪਤਾ ਲੱਗ ਸਕੇ ਕਿ ਉਹ ਆਂਕੜਿਆਂ ਨ
ਉਹ ਹੈਲਥ ਕੇਅਰ ਸਿਸਟਮ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਕਿ ਇੰਡੀਜੀਨਸ ਭਾਈਚਾਰੇ ਦਾ ਆਂਕੜੇ ਇਕੱਠੇ ਕੀਤੇ ਗਏ ਉਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ 85% ਇੰਡੀਜੀਨਸ ਭਾਈਚਾਰੇ ਨੇ ਇਹ ਕਿਹਾ ਕਿ ਸਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਜਦ ਅਸੀਂ ਹੈਲਥ ਕੇਅਰ ਸੈਟਿੰਗ ਵਿੱਚ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਸਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਡਿਸਕ੍ਰਿਮੀਨੇਸ਼ਨ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਉਹ ਰਿਪੋਰਟ ਜਦ ਆਈ ਉਹ ਡਾਕਟਰ ਮੈਰੀ ਐਲਨ ਟਰਪਲਰਫੋਨ ਨੇ ਰਿਪੋਰਟ ਪਬਲਿਕ ਕੀਤੀ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਰਿਪੋਰਟ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਮਿਨਿਸਟਰੀ ਆਫ ਹੈਲਥ ਉਹ ਇੱਕ ਰეკਮੈਂਡੇਸ਼ਨਸ ਤੇ ਨਾਲ ਆਈ ਸੀਗੀ ਤੇ ਮਿਨਿਸਟਰੀ ਆਫ ਹੈਲਥ ਕਾਫੀ ਐਕਟਿਵਲੀ ਕੰਮ ਕਰ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਕਿਵੇਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਆਪਣੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਹੈਲਥ ਸੰਸਥਾਵਾਂ ਹੈਗੀਆਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਕਿਵੇਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ 'ਚ ਬੈਰੀਅਰਸ ਤੋੜੇ ਜਾਣ ਇੰਡੀਜੀਨਸ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਦੇ ਲਈ ਕਿਵੇਂ ਸੁਖਾਲਾ ਕੀਤਾ ਜਾਏ ਕਿ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਉਹ ਜਿਹੜੀਆਂ ਡਿਸਕ੍ਰਿਮੀਨੇਸ਼ਨ ਫੇਸ ਕੀਤਾ ਉਹ ਨਾ ਕੀਤਾ ਜਾਏ ਸੋ ਇਹੀ ਚੀਜ਼ ਇਹੀ ਅਪਰੋਚ ਅਸੀਂ ਲੈਣਾ ਚਾਹਾਂਗੇ ਜਦ ਸਾਡੇ ਕੋਲ ਰਿਪੋਰਟ ਆਏਗੀ ਅਜੇ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਨਹੀਂ ਪਤਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਕਿ ਸਾਡੇ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਦਾ ਕਿਵੇਂ ਦਾ ਵਰਤੀਰਾ ਨਾਲ ਕਿਵੇਂ ਦਾ ਵਰਤੀਰਾ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਜਦ ਉਹ ਹੈਲਥ ਕੇਅਰ ਸੈਟਿੰਗ 'ਚ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਆ ਬੇਸ਼ੱਕ ਉਹ ਐਜੂਕੇਸ਼ਨ ਸੈਟਿੰਗ 'ਚ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਆ ਪੁਲਿਸਿੰਗ ਦੀ ਗੱਲ ਆਈ ਹੈਗੀ ਹੈ ਹਾਊਸਿੰਗ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਵੀ ਬਹੁਤ ਵਾਰ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਜਦ ਅਸੀਂ ਬਲੈਕ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀਜ਼ ਨਾਲ ਇਹ ਕੰਸਲਟੇਸ਼ਨ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਸੀਗੇ ਤੇ ਇਹ ਦੇਖਿਆ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਕਿ ਬਲੈਕ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀਜ਼ ਕੋਲ ਹਾਊਸਿੰਗ ਦੀ ਜਦ ਗੱਲ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਉਹ ਹਾਊਸਿੰਗ ਓਨਰਸ਼ਿਪ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਹੈ ਕਾਫੀ ਘੱਟ ਹੈ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਕੋਲ ਕੀ ਬੈਰੀਅਰਸ ਹੈਗੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਕੋਲ ਕਿਉਂ ਉਹ ਘੱਟ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਹੈ ਕਿਉਂ ਜਦ ਉਹ ਰੈਂਟਲ ਹਾਊਸਿੰਗ ਵੀ ਲੈਣ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਕਿਉਂ ਬੈਰੀਅਰਸ ਆਉਂਦੇ ਹੈ ਇਹ ਜਦ ਆਂਕੜੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਕੋਲ ਚੰਗੀ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਆ ਜਾਣਗੇ ਵੀ ਵਿਲ ਕੈਨ ਵਰਕ ਵਿਦ ਦਾ ਬੀਸੀ ਹਾਊਸਿੰਗ ਵਰਗੀ ਸੰਸਥਾਵਾਂ ਨਾਲ ਕਿ ਉਹ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਬੈਰੀਅਰਸ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਹਟਾਏ ਜਾਣ ਕਿ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਇਕੁਅਲ ਐਕਸੈਸ ਹੋਵੇ ਉਹ ਸਰਵਿਸਿਸ ਦਾ ਜਿਹਦੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਹੱਕਦਾਰ ਹੈ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ ਅ ਫੋਲੋ ਅਪ ਬਟ ਸਰ ਜਸਟ try to understand anti racism data is it just systemic within the government institutions or is it going to be also with public companies or uh... and i think that's a really really good question that we a uh, lot of people have asked us we know that racism exists everywhere but we want to start with the core government services uh, because that i think as a government we have a moral and ethical responsibility to tackle racism we are uh within our services and then there's a possibility within this legislation to broaden it to the uh, other public uh, bodies and the private organizations but right now it would be the core government services uh the follow up how does it look right now uh, and what what sort of changes are we looking at like you mentioned like housing as an example uh, does the federal government have something similar or is it uh, on its own bc program so this is uh, in ontario they have a, a, a this similar kind of legislation that ontario government brought uh, in 2017 uh, so this is we are going to be the second province to bring the uh, anti racism data legislation but theirs is an anti racism act uh, ours is like we have started with the anti racism data legislation and we will follow the act afterwards um, but what we are going to do is um, we will uh, we have identified key sectors like which the communities have told us as healthcare has come up education has come up housing has come up policing is also coming up uh, and we will be collecting the data in those we will the data that will be collected through bc stats we will try to put it in the data that we already have and then combine it with the disaggregated data that we collect with the bc stats and then we will work on where the inequities are in those key sectors that communities have identified for us but that does not mean that those those are the only sectors there is a big possibility of broadening the sect, uh, the sectors within the government and then also going to the public bodies Minister, you want to add more to that or well, maybe i can provide a specific example in housing so in housing we have grants for seniors to help them pay rent there's additional money that they can receive called the safer grant uh we know the people who are receiving the safer grant uh we know because they have to apply for it they have to ask for it so this legislation could allow bc housing and the government to look at who is receiving the safer grants and by extension who is not is there a particular community of seniors that is not receiving safer grants that would benefit from the program maybe they don't know about the program maybe there's some piece of information we ask for that uh, they don't have for some reason um and the only way we know that they're not getting this grant is through this law allowing us to collect previously it was illegal for us to collect this information in this way so this law allows us to collect this information and know so that's an example about how housing could make or how this law could make housing more secure for seniors in different cultural groups um just by collecting this data and then we're able to fix the program Good morning, uh, Sonia West, Sanja TV. I'm really glad we're having this conversation, first of all. 
My question is two parts. Uh, one is the collection, the data collection that we've had in the past hasn't really worked out. And I'm wondering about this data collection, why is it actually going to be accurate? Because I'm assuming there were challenges, especially gathering from maybe some ethnic communities, specifically indigenous. Uh, really good question. Like historically, as we said, like a lot of times we have collected the data, but we have not uh, given emphasis. We haven't put emphasis on the cultural harm that those communities might endure with the collection of this data. And that's why uh, this, uh, when we were uh, working on this legislation, we started with the pre-consultations with the communities that are going to be impacted, especially the First Nations uh, indigenous communities. We had conversations with them. And also when we started the consultation part, one thing that we heard was that they did not want the government to come and do these consultations for them. They wanted to lead these converse, uh, conversations within their own communities. So we hired, uh, uh, we, we, we secured funding uh, to, which was given out to different community partners. And uh, they did uh, these consultations. So more than 70 consultation, more than 70 organizations received that funding, more than 450 uh, community consultations took place, and there was separate consultation that was being held for the indigenous and Beti uh, communities. And also with the, um, uh, we have talked about the community harm, uh, that, that a lot of emphasis was div given on that, that those communities should not be further harmed. And that's why when we were developing this legislation, the indigenous and Métis uh, uh, communities were part of it. And that's why this legislation is very unique, first time ever in the history of British Columbia that we have a legislation co-developed with those communities. Very good. And then the other thing I wonder is there's such a... a um, there's such a focus on indigenous communities. This. Uh, is for all the communities, anybody that is black, um, people of color, Absolutely. even though I've been reading a lot about indigenous, it's yeah. for all of us. So we, we talk about the indigenous because that was like a separate consultation happened. When I talked about these 70 organizations that participated, that got the funding, those communities, organizations were the racialized, like they were from the South Asian communities, they were from the Asian communities, black communities, and all the different diverse communities that we have here in British Columbia. So this consultation, and those were the communities that participated really, uh, I think, uh, First time ever they participated so much in any consultation uh, that we have ever had. Very good, thank you. Hi, my name is Parmeet, I'm from Red FM. Uh, Rachna ji, my question is regarding the topic of systemic racism. And the topic of mindset. Mm. Pehla, asi bahut bari apne hai, history, which we've seen a lot in our history, which we've seen a lot in our history, which we've seen a lot in our history, but now we've seen a lot in our history, and thanks to you, you've seen a lot in And thanks to you, you've seen a lot in our history. Uh, West Vancouver, which is uh, a racist language, uh, in the land covenant, which is explicitly mentioned that no African or Asian can buy property, only if it is not surrendered, if it is not surrendered, if it is not surrendered, if it is not surrendered. clause in 1978, which is not a clause, it is not a document which is not a document. West Vancouver Council is that $1 million is the नहीं जाएगा सिर्फ इस टू शायद ब्लैकआउट कीता जाएगा दो साल हो गए ने इस गल नु असि रेसिज्म दी कर कर सिस्टेमिक रेसिज्म दी पर रेसिज्म दी जड़ी जड़ा ने ओ अजे तक नहीं कटिया जा सकिया इस बारे तुसी की कहना चाहोगे जी बिल्कुल है गल काफी ज्यादा आजकल ਸਾਨੂੰ ਪਤਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਇਨ ਵੈਸਟ ਵੈਂਕੂਵਰ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਉਹ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਰੇਸਿਸਟ ਲੈਂਗੁਏਜ ਸੀਗੇ ਸਪੈਸ਼ਲੀ ਇਨ ਦ ਲੈਂਡ ਟਾਈਟਲਸ ਉਹ ਕਾਫੀ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਦੁੱਖ ਪਹੁੰਚਾਉਂਦੀ ਹੈ ਹਾਲਾਂਕਿ ਜੇ ਲੀਗਲੀ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਦੇਖਿਆ ਜਾਏ ਤਾਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਕੋਈ ਮਾਇਨਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈਗਾ ਉਹ ਬਿਲਕੁਲ ਵੋਇਡ ਹੈਗੇ ਪਰ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਉਹ ਅਜੇ ਵੀ ਲੈਂਡ ਟਾਈਟਲਸ ਚ ਹੈਗੇ ਆ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਤਕਲੀਫ ਦਿੰਦੇ ਹੈਗੇ ਸੋ ਉਹਦੇ ਲਈ ਆਈ ਨੋ ਕਿ ਵੈਸਟ ਵੈਂਕੂਵਰ ਦਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਆਪਣੀਆਂ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਉਹ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਮਿਊਨਿਸਪੈਲਿਟੀ ਹੈ ਦੇ ਆਰ ਵਰਕਿੰਗ ਔਨ ਇਟ ਪਰ ਅਸੀਂ ਵੀ ਵਰਕਿੰਗ ਵਿਦ ਦਾ ਯੂਬੀਸੀਐਮ ਅਸੀਂ ਪੂਰਾ ਇਹਦੇ ਵੱਲ ਧਿਆਨ ਦਵਾਂਗੇ ਐਂਡ ਆਈ ਵਿਲ ਪਾਸ ਇਟ ਔਨ ਟੂ ਦਾ ਮਿਨਿਸਟਰ ਐਂਡ ਵੀ ਆਰ ਟਾਕਿੰਗ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਦੀ ਰੇਸਿਸਟ ਲੈਂਗੁਏਜ ਯਾ ਪਿਕ ਇਟ ਅਪ ਅਮ ਐਂਡ ਸੋ ਮਿਨਿਸਟਰ ਕਨਰੋਇ ਹੂ ਇਜ਼ ਦਾ ਮਿਨਿਸਟਰ ਫਾਰ ਫੋਰੈਸਟ ਇਜ਼ ਰਿਸਪੌਂਸਿਬਲ ਫਾਰ ਦਾ ਲੈਂਡ ਟਾਈਟਲ ਆਫਿਸ ਇਨ ਹਰ ਮਿਨਿਸਟਰੀ ਐਂਡ ਸ਼ੀ ਐਂਡ ਹਰ ਸਟਾਫ ਆਰ ਵਰਕਿੰਗ ਵਿਦ ਦਾ ਲੈਂਡ ਟਾਈਟਲ ਆਫਿਸ ਟੂ ਫਾਈਂਡ ਵੇਜ਼ ਟੂ ਅਡਰੈਸ ਥਿਸ ਇਸ਼ੂ The land titles themselves in British Columbia, uh, the electronic ones, are um, photographs of the older documents, or they're actually physically the older documents. So uh, uh, there needs to be a technological solution. There's thousands of these deeds um, across the province, especially in older parts of the province, more established New Westminster, West Vancouver, Vancouver, Victoria, thousands of these deeds that may have these kinds of provisions on them. 
um, which are very offensive to all British Columbians and shocking to homeowners when they get them and they read them and they can't believe that this is still on these documents. So a technological solution is what we're looking for to go through all these documents to recognize the text uh, so that we can pull them out and have land title office staff edit them. But they require a document by document approach, so it's a very big job, which is why we've Governments uh, have known about this issue for many decades, uh, but haven't addressed the issue because of the size of, and so they correct them as they come up, as the properties are sold. But we believe that the time has come for a government to really address the issue as a whole. And so that's the work that's happening in the Ministry of uh, Forest right now. Thank you. Uh, my, thank you. My follow-up is, when we talk about racism, the mindset has to change the mindset. Because we are not human beings, we are not human beings, we are not organizations and systems. How do you know the mindset of the people who have been able to change the mindset of the people who have been able to change the mindset? In 2023, we will see a solution, but what about now? Absolutely, and that is a very important question. We are talking about racism, but racism is a very complex issue. And I also talked about the legislation, and I also talked about the fact that I was talking about the minister, that only the legislation is not the same, or the same as racism, there is no magic bullet, that the racism will go. One is that there is a certain commitment, and there is a whole thing, and there is a whole thing that we have to do. The education is a lot, बहुत बार गाला ही है कि है कि क्योंकि एजुकेशन के नाल कि मैं ऐसी अपनी जड़ी अगली पीढ़ी है उन्हें कि मैं ऐना चीज़ें बारे होर ज़्यादा उन्हें समझाया जा सके तो कि मैं उन्हें अवेयर कितना जावे कि कि मैं तेरे रेसिसम है का बेशक वो सारे हिस्टोरिकल रॉंग्स नू लेके हुए चाइनीज हेडटैक्स spoke hai, all over British Columbia. Oh, kafi jada kam karte awareness vadaan which I see human rights commissioner uh, the bahali jadi hai gi hai. I think that is something jada sa di sarkar de aan to baat pella jada si kam kita unna uh, udi bahali ka ki awareness jada aa sake. Naal hor jadi uh, Awareness campaign is an anti-racism awareness campaign that was launched in 2021. There are all posters in all schools that say that you are watching racism, you are talking about it, don't be a silent bystander. So, I think that we are going to do this, but we are going to do this. But now, there is an allyship. You are all in the media, 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 you are all in the media. I think these are very, very important steps that we can do to create anti-racist British Columbia. So, you can see it. It's not that the legislation will be finished with anti-racism act, and then the racism will be finished. But when we talk about racism, we have a great deal. The first racism is the R-word. People say that they are afraid of racism, because we are living in a multicultural province, and there is no racism. But when we talk about it, we are talking about it, bringing the awareness and also bringing the action plan to tackle it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, it's Sharma from Darpen Magazine. My question is for Minister Eby. Uh, Minister, just wondering when it comes to money laundering, um, the plan is to release the report, uh, but there hasn't been a date provided on that yet. Uh, just wondering if you've got any specifics on the timeline. Uh, thank you uh, for the question. We've received uh, the report from Commissioner Cullen and his team. Uh, we received it on Friday, which was the deadline for the report. The Public Inquiry Act requires me to put that in front of Cabinet for Cabinet's consideration and decision around public release. Uh, cabinet will make that decision and then it will be released. Our goal is to release uh, the report as quickly as possible. It's a very lengthy report. It's over a thousand pages. Uh, and I would like uh, British Columbians to have this information as soon as possible. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you. This is Kuljit Kaur from Media Waves. Good to see you all. Uh, we are talking about data. I would like to know data and uh, regarding racism. I want to know more about 13,000 numbers. Mm -hmm. What it says. Okay. Uh, so, uh, when we uh, started the consultation with the, cons the formal consultation for this anti-racism data, Legislation started in uh, uh, October of 2021, uh, and we started with, uh, as I said, uh, we uh, uh, we made it public that this consultation is open. We had an online survey uh, that was uh, 
One second. I'm so sorry about that. It's okay. I just want to clarify because I have not heard from where the data is coming out because I have never seen it. Okay. So that was like there was an online survey that was mm. available in more than 14 languages uh, mm. uh, and uh, that anybody anybody uh, in British Columbia could fill that survey and uh, we got really good uptake on that survey. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also then the consultations that were happening in the community. Uh, so as I said, more than 70 organizations uh, took the lead on that uh, within, within the uh, racialized communities like black, uh, black uh, South Asian and Chinese communities and they were doing the consultations. Most of the consultations like we were hoping that they will happen in person but some of them because of the COVID uh, restrictions they, were, they happened over the Zoom. Uh, more than 450 uh, consultation uh, sessions were held uh, by, by racialized communities. And then we also hired a uh, separate uh, consultation, uh, consultant to do the consultations with the indigenous nations, separate indigenous nations, and the Métis Nation BC. Well, I am very happy to hear that because all the conversations so far I heard many aspects from uh, indigenous community to the uh, minorities, but RCMP came in the end, though RCMP is famous for r racism. For the people who has less voice, it's a concern which uh, should be taken care of. And the next, uh, my follow-up is for Mr. David, David Abbey, when I see you, I always want to see, ask this question. Today, I had a chance due to uh, time as a lot. I want to know about um, affordable housing. Um, it is, I didn't see any, any at all uh, improvement in this, not from now, but from almost 15, more than 15 years. And the people who are really badly affected do raise this concern with me. I have a tendency to work with the people who are marginalized. The services which are provided, affordable housing under, it looks like that, it feels like that. It's the agencies who are operating these facilities, they are not providing the services. They are gouging the money from government mm -hmm. trier mm -hmm. and the services are not provided to the people who really needed. I would appreciate if the government could keep a sharp eye on it and a strong hand. And I want to know your promise on that. Sure. Thank that's you. A, that's a really good question. I think there are a couple of parts to that. Um, one is a really important issue you raise around the accountability of nonprofit organizations that deliver services for BC housing. The model that we have and one that we inherited is one where government funds third parties Nonprofit organizations, sometimes they have religious affiliations, sometimes they're service organizations or charities um, to deliver housing and to provide services in housing. Um, the uh, uh, model and the system has grown up uh, to be very significant. BC Housing's budget is over a billion dollars, it's almost a billion dollars. Um, and, uh, and provide services, all kinds of different services across the province through these nonprofit organizations. Um, uh, I asked for, and, uh, and Ministry of Finance supported me in asking for uh, a third-party business firm, uh, Ernst & Young, to come in and do a review inside BC Housing to make sure that they, are, they have the controls in place, that they have the oversight in place to make sure that these programs are delivered properly. BC Housing separately is also working on a model uh, that comes from the United Kingdom around nonprofit accountability. Uh, they do regular audits and reviews of the nonprofit organizations, but a more systemic approach to ensure that each of the nonprofit organizations is hitting minimum standards uh, for um, services that they're providing. The third piece is we receive complaints from people about different nonprofit organizations. They're not doing this job, they're not delivering this service, whatever. We, uh, uh, when that happens, we hire a third party reviewer to come in and go and look at the program to interview people inside the housing, to interview the neighbors of the housing, to interview the nonprofit organization and to audit the books to make sure the services are being delivered. So there is work that's happening on this already when we get complaints, uh, but there's a bigger piece of work happening to fix and improve the system so that it, because it's grown so big so quickly, um, to make sure that people are getting the services that we're paying for. That's one part. 
The second part is um, there are a group of people who in our supportive housing are so sick that they are not, um, uh, the service levels in the buildings are not enough to keep them housed and they cause a lot of chaos inside the building and outside the building. So it's about 10 to 15% of the people who live in supportive housing. And so we just launched a new program called Complex Care, which won't be delivered by nonprofits, but will be delivered by the health authorities. And the health authorities themselves will be the ones who are providing mental health services and addiction services for people so that uh, inside the buildings, they're not causing as much disruption, but also in the community because often they get evicted because they're violent inside the building or they're setting a fire or whatever, they get evicted from the building and then they're homeless again. And so the sickest people, the, the ones who um, are the most in need of services are the ones who aren't getting it, who are out in the community. So we have 500 of these beds that are opening across the province to provide services to those individuals. And we're hopeful that that will be a very significant improvement um, to make sure that they are uh, doing well in the housing and also to take some pressure off the other residents and the nonprofit organizations because people need health, they need health care. They need nurses, they need doctors. And the uh, nonprofit organizations are, they're trained volunteers or they're trained um, workers in the buildings, but they're not healthcare professionals. So we think this will make a significant difference. Thank you, Minister. I do hope keep a sharp eye and a strong hand. I will. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> we are talking to Rachna Singh, Parliamentary Secretary, for this brilliant initiative. Um, thank you so much. Uh, only both necessary girls ki pe hon finally sanu mokka milna pe sade vi jidi sade vi awaaz sun sakde right jidde hon hospitals di gal kiti hai pe healthcare ke vari hunda nahi hai ga sade communities sanu dekh ke kende chalo it's just another indian right eh both jidda eh dil nu lagdi gal so it's really nice pe to see jidi position hai ge to see influence kar sakde you can make some change odde bare sanu dasso ji bahut bahut shukriya mainu bahut jada maan hai ga sade sarkar te jehda ki racism nu bahut jada ik unna ne mudda banaya ik priority banaya ਪ੍ਰੀਮੀਅਰ ਹੌਰਕਨ ਦਾ ਇਹ ਕਹਿਣਾ ਕਿ ਇੱਕ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਵੀ ਸਰਕਾਰ ਹੈ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਮੋਰਲ ਤੇ ਐਥਿਕਲ ਰਿਸਪੌਂਸਿਬਿਲਟੀ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਟੂ ਟੈਕਲ ਰੈਸਿਜ਼ਮ ਪਰ ਸਿਰਫ ਗੱਲਾਂ ਕਰਕੇ ਹੀ ਰੈਸਿਜ਼ਮ ਟੈਕਲ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੋਏਗਾ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਸਿਸਟੈਮਿਕ ਚੇਂਜਸ ਲਿਆਉਣ ਦੀ ਲੋੜ ਹੈਗੀ ਹੈ ਸਪੈਸ਼ਲੀ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਸਿਸਟੈਮਿਕ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਕਲੋਨੀਅਲਿਜ਼ਮ ਜਿਹਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਕੀ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਕੀ ਸਾਡੇ ਸਟਰਕਚਰਸ ਚ ਵੜਿਆ ਹੋਇਆ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਕਿਵੇਂ ਕੱਢਿਆ ਜਾਵੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਜਾਣਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਕਿ ਇੰਡੀਜੀਨਸ ਭਾਈਚਾਰੇ ਨਾਲ ਇੱਥੇ ਕੀ ਹੋਇਆ ਹੈਗਾ ਪਰ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਕੱਲਾ ਇੰਡੀਜੀਨਸ ਭਾਈਚਾਰਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਵਰਗੇ ਲੋਕ ਹੈ ਸਾਊਥ ਏਸ਼ੀਅਨ ਲੋਕ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਸਾਡੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਵੀ ਬਹੁਤ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਇਨਇਕੁਇਟੀਜ਼ ਹੁੰਦੀਆਂ ਆਈਆਂ ਤੇ ਹੁਣ ਵੀ ਹੋ ਰਹੀਆਂ ਜਿਹੜੀਆਂ ਕਿ ਬਹੁਤ ਨਜ਼ਰ ਨਹੀਂ ਆਉਂਦੀਆਂ ਕਈ ਵਾਰ ਬਹੁਤ ਸਟਲ ਤਰੀਕੇ ਨਾਲ ਹੁੰਦੀਆਂ ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟ ਸਰਵਿਸਿਜ਼ ਚ ਕੌਨਸ਼ੀਅਸ ਜਾਂ ਅਨਕੌਨਸ਼ੀਅਸ ਲੈਵਲ ਤੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਬਰੀਕੀਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਇਨਇਕੁਇਟੀਜ਼ ਨੂੰ ਕਿਵੇਂ ਲਾਈਟ ਦਿਖਾਈ ਜਾਵੇ ਕਿਵੇਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਤੇ ਕੰਮ ਕੀਤਾ ਜਾਵੇ ਇਹ ਬਹੁਤ ਜ਼ਰੂਰੀ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਅਸੀਂ ਉਹਦੇ ਬਾਰੇ ਅੰਕੜੇ ਇਕੱਠੇ ਕਰਤੇ ਜਾ ਕਿਤੇ ਜਾਣ ਤੇ ਆਈ ਐਂਟੀ ਰੈਸਿਜ਼ਮ ਡੇਟਾ ਲੈਜਿਸਲੇਸ਼ਨ ਆਈ ਕੰਮ ਕਰੇਗਾ ਉਹ ਅੰਕੜਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਸਾਹਮਣੇ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਆਏਗਾ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਇਟ ਵਿਲ ਸ਼ੈਡ ਲਾਈਟ ਔਨ ਥੋਸ ਨੰਬਰਸ ਕਿ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਕੀ ਅਜੇ ਤੱਕ ਛੁਪੇ ਹੋਏ ਸੀਗੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਕਦੀ ਇਕੱਠੇ ਹੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਕੀਤੇ ਹੈਗੇ ਪਿਛੇ ਕੋ ਸਾਡੀ ਕੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਸਾਡੀ ਬੋਲੀ ਹੈਗੀ ਹੈ ਸਾਡੀ ਐਥਨਿਸਿਟੀ ਕੀ ਹੈਗੀ ਹੈ ਅਸੀਂ ਕਿਹੜੀ ਬੈਕਗ੍ਰਾਉਂਡ ਤੋਂ ਆਏ ਆ ਜਾਂ ਕਿਹੜੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਕਿਹੜੀ ਸਾਡਾ ਰਿਲੀਜਨ ਕੀ ਹੈ ਹੈਨਾ ਔਰ ਪਿਛੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਪਗੜੀ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਲੋਕੀ ਪਾਉਂਦੇ ਆ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਕਿਵੇਂ ਦਾ ਸਾਹਮਣਾ ਕਰ ਕਰਨਾ ਪੈ ਰਿਹਾ ਜਾਂ ਕੋਈ ਹਿਜਾਬ ਪਾ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਕਿਵੇਂ ਦਾ ਡਿਫਰੈਂਟ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਦਾ ਸਾਹਮਣਾ ਕਰਨਾ ਪੈ ਰਿਹਾ ਸੋ ਥੀਸ ਆਰ ਦਾ ਲਿਟਲ ਸਟਲ ਨੌਨਸਿਸ ਥੈਟ ਵੀ ਆਰ ਵਰਕਿੰਗ ਔਨ ਔਰ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਬਹੁਤ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਉਮੀਦ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਜਦ ਇਹ ਅੰਕੜੇ ਇਕੱਠੇ ਹੋ ਜਾਣਗੇ ਉਹ ਚੇਂਜ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਆਣਗੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਕਿ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀਆਂ ਬਹੁਤ ਦੇਰ ਤੋਂ ਮੰਗ ਕਰ ਰਹੀਆਂ ਸੀ ਹੁਣ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਗੱਲ ਕੀਤੀ ਹਿਜਾਬ ਦੀ ਤੇ ਪਗੜੀ ਦੀ ਇਟਸ ਅ ਸਾਈਨ ਜਦੋਂ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਦੇਖੋ ਆਪਣੀ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਐਨੀਬਡੀ ਦੈਟ ਹੈਜ਼ ਦੈਟ ਉਸ ਵਿਲ ਵੀ ਅ ਟਾਰਗੇਟ ਸੋ ਬਹੁਤ ਦੁੱਖ ਲੱਗਦਾ ਜਦੋਂ ਵੀ ਆਰ ਸੋ ਟਾਰਗੇਟਡ ਆਲ ਦਾ ਟਾਈਮ ਹੁਣ ਵੀ ਰੀਸੈਂਟਲੀ ਵੀ ਮਾਸਕ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਕਿੰਨੀ ਪ੍ਰੋਬਲਮ ਹੋਈ ਸੀਗੀ ਦ ਬੋਟਲ ਆਫ ਵਾਟਰ ਵਨ ਸਮਬਡੀ ਥਰੂ ਥੈਟ ਸੋ ਇਫ ਜਿਸ
ਜਿਹੜੀਆਂ ਹੈਗੀਆਂ ਉਹ ਆਇਡੈਂਟੀ ਨੂੰ ਉਹ ਆਇਡੈਂਟੀ ਕਿਵੇਂ ਬੈਰੀਅਰਸ ਕ੍ਰੀਏਟ ਕਰ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਮੇਰੀ ਸਰਵਿਸਿਜ਼ ਐਕਸੈਸ ਕਰਨ ਵਿੱਚ ਅਸੀਂ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਤੋਂ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਉਹ ਜਾਣਕਾਰੀ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਬੈਰੀਅਰਸ ਨੂੰ ਤੋੜਨਾ ਚਾਹੁੰਦੇ That's very good. We applaud you at Sanjay TV. Thank you for bringing this forward. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. So to see aaj dekhya saade program de vich anti racism bare gal hoyi si gi te jehdi ben safi agge hundi si gi saadi community de naal black community de naal indigenous community Chinese jehde vi hoye jehde non white communities ya unde de naal jehdi ben safi hoyi hai ohde bare hun eh acts jehda ya data jehda collect kita ohde naal pata lagduga pe kithe kithe kamiyan ya te kidda ohna da hal kar sakde ha. I'm Sonia West for Sanjay TV. We'll see you next time.